Lisa from Behind the Knits and also Creative Vermont. Um, this is a podcast where we talk about creativity, knitting, we share our knits, we talk about what it means to be a creative person, how important creativity is to our well-being, and, um, and in all the different ways that that expresses in our lives, right? We have uh, we have sweaters, we have uh, our homes, we have our families, we have our lives. Our lives are a creative act in many ways. So um, it's just a nice time to kind of come together and take our knitting and our creative selves a little more seriously in this crazy, busy, chaotic world. And uh, I have some some unfinished objects that I'm going to share with you today, some finished objects. Um, it's just been, I feel like this last couple of weeks has been, or these last, really these last few months, it's been really hard for me to focus on my knitting and really, really complete projects. I did for me, I did a lot of projects this winter in all fairness to me. I did the, um, I did this, I did the Carlina pullover. Um, this was a big one. I did, um, the really big one was the, um, the Antha shawl from Moonstruck Knits. That was a really, really big project. You can see that, uh, have that one where you can really take a good look at that one. That was, I'm really proud of that. That took a lot out of me. I took all, I also did the Big Love sweater, um, and that's Anka Strick who did that. And that was another great, that was another really, uh, you know, focused knit. And then as we kind of like, as after that, it was kind of like, you know, hard for me to kind of get focused because I started to think about like right now, my house is so chaotic. I'm looking at, you know, you can't see it, but I'm looking on my counter and I have trays and trays of seedlings under grow lights. Um, you know, getting ready. We're, we we have composting materials, <laughs> not not food composting. I don't have like decomposting f materials, but it's like we're we're getting ready for our compost to move our compost outside into the garden. Um, you know, we've been putting, we've been mulching, we've been doing so much with the garden that it's just, and we've been painting. The house is getting painted. We are, as I shared before, we're doing um, kind of Art Nouveau. Uh, like a saffron yellow with navy trim and uh, we're getting ready to paint the outside of the house so this is all like really um this is all creative stuff too right this is all the stuff that we do in our daily lives that's just an expression of who we are and how we express ourselves to the world and to me what I've really found that is important to me as I get older and as I really consider time to do the things that I love that having handcrafted beauty is really important. And um, that's a really, really important thing to me. And I would ask all of you to consider what is it that's important to you with regard to creativity? What is it that you get out of this? Why do you put so much time and effort into your knits or into your crocheting or, what, how, or your painting or whatever it is that you do? What is it about it that really brings you meaning? Because that's, that's the key to why we do this. That's the key to like expanding and leaning into and having more of that in our lives and having the life 
the creative life that we really want. Um, so in that vein, I, I found a beautiful poem. I love Mary Oliver. Uh, she's a great poet. She was a great poet. I just love, she talks about nature and she talks about our connection to nature. And that was another reason why we came up here uh, to Vermont and um, to be, to have more nature in our lives. And, uh, and she is just, you know, the way she views nature and the way she views life, I just think you know, she, she was, she passed away, but she, she's just such an, her poetry is so profound and beautiful. So I'm going to share, um, the poem called the summer's day. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean, the one who has flung herself out of the grass, the one who is eating sugar out of my hand, who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down, who is gazing around her with enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't, I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel down in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I have been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? So when I read that, I just thought, you know, this is such, it, it's, it kind of gets at the heart of why I knit, because it seems sometimes that when we're knitting that does anyone, you know, is this for anyone else? Is this for anyone, you know, does anyone else take notice of this? But I think I take notice of it. And even, and others around me do take notice of it, but the most important person that takes note of it is me. And it's a marker of my life. When I look back on my sweaters and I look back on, and my on my shawls and all these projects that I've done they tell me what it, where I was at in my life what I was doing what I was thinking what were my concerns and they kind of just mark the years and as Elizabeth Zimmerman kind of revealed with her life that those sweaters are the work of our works of our lives and so I just thought that was really beautiful and I encourage you to take your knitting seriously, take your work seriously, right? This is this is the work of our lives. So I'm gonna share with you what's been going on. Um, I have here, this is the Bennett shawl. I just, I have been working on it for so long. <laughs> it's like, it's just, it's coming along. Oop, I don't want it to come off the needles. Um, this is my first cable, uh, cable knit. And this is held together. I have two, so you can see it's like a diamond shaped cable. And I'll, I'll put a little, I'll, I'll put a picture of what the finished, what the knit looks like, what the sweater, what the pattern picture looks like. Um, so I held together in this, um, I held two, yarn, two yarns together. I held a Leicester wool that I got when we went to um, Massachusetts to that, um, to that wool festival. I can't remember what that was called at this moment, but I got a beautiful Leicester sheep and I did have the, a link to, I had, I had the name of the, of the, of the people who made that sheep, who, who raised that sheep. Um, it's a heritage wool and it's gorgeous. And then I also held it with, um, one strand mohair and so it's really soft and it creates when you hold, if you've ever, and to do a cable with yarn held double is kind of interesting because there are especially uh, this is not using a cable needle um so you're you're knitting into the back stitch and then you're kind of twisting the stitches on the needle and it creates this it creates this cable this um this diamond shape which is really cool and really um you know just a really simple cool diamond shape and then um 
eventually well when i get to, when i finish up with it actually i'm going to start it now i'm going to start the, the border and then it's going to have like a garter knit shawl so it's going to kind of be not a shawl that you use as a wrap or kind of um it's going to be this like it kind of sits on you almost like a cape it's kind of cool um and it's going to be th this is producing a yarn like a, a fabric that is uh very dense very soft and very, very warm. Like even just putting it on my lap right now, I actually got a lot warmer. So this is, I'm looking forward to wearing this when it gets cold. Um, it has this, you know, kind of like mirrors the both sides, the patterns mirror each other. And um, I'm really enjoying it. I'm just, you know, I just wish that I had more, more time <laughs> to focus on it right now, but I will, I'll get back to it. It's really kind of cool. The, the, the cables are very subtle in this kind of yarn. And if you want to do something more, um, you know, something where the cables really stand out a little bit more, I would go with a single yarn. I would go with like a Merino or I'd go with even a Shetland. A Shetland would really show off the cables really nicely in this. Um, so, but this is really cool. I'm working on this. I also love these um, Choigu, is that how you say them? Choigu needles. They're so sharp and pointy. I love sharp and pointy needles. Do you? I like them. Like, especially when I'm doing color work or cable work or something where I'm going to be kind of getting in there. I really like my needle to be sharp and pointy. How about you? What is? <laughs> what are other people's thoughts about that? I know there's people who prefer either one, you know, the a more dull needle or I really like the sharp. It's, it feels more precise to me and it feels like I have more control over my knitting. Um, so this is something I'm working on right now. Something that I wanted to share with you that I, I don't think I've really gone into was um, I had knit this. This is a, um, it was a swatch that I made from a, a Meg Swanson um, pattern and it was, it's color work. And I'm just really, like, I think it's just really beautiful. And I like to take it out every once in a while and just share it with you. Um, I think it just shows how color work can have such subtlety of, you know, this is, this is just, um, just two colors of Shetland, but it has such beautiful shadowing. It almost looks like I used a gradient yarn right it really just has beautiful um i just think the 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 shade uh, the shadowing and the uh depth of color is really really beautiful and the back of it is just it's also really cool i really love how good color work looks really nice from behind and i did carry my floats and i was really careful with this i did this on a plane ride to idaho I went from New York to Idaho and um, I was just like really focused and I really enjoyed making it. And it's, a, I wear it as a, um, you know, a cowl. I put on, I added some buttons. I did it, I did it, I knitted in the round and I made a steak and I cut it. And then I added buttonholes. I picked up and added buttonholes. So it's, it goes around like this and it's um, super warm and just really classic beautiful kind of if I were gonna do it again I'd add a third buttonhole you know so it's kind of because how I end up usually wearing it is I undo the bottom button and it kind of is like our uh, you know op more open and kind of like wider on the neck so it shows the pattern at the bottom of the neck so it's it's really really I love this so um and then the other thing that I have been working on, but I haven't finished is um, I'm making a cardigan using uh, Plotilope. And it has, um, so I've, it, this is a bottom up cardigan. This is the, um, here it is, bottom up. And I'm gonna, it has a steak down the center. So I'm gonna cut this and I'm working on some sleeves. And I thought this would be really just a nice, I saw a beautiful, simple um, color work pattern. I'm gonna just do a two color pattern with that. Um, it's gonna be a large motif. I'll post a picture in here so you can see what it looks like. Um, but it's really just, 
gonna be a basic kind of thing I'm gonna have to put, throw on. And I love, Plotilope is a challenge to knit sleeves on. I find that to be, I don't like to knit my sleeves. I don't like to work on uh, four needles, but I'm doing it, you know. But it's not my favorite thing to do because the, you know, as you know, the yarn can break. Um, but I do like the lightness of this yarn and, and the warmth. It really provides a lot of um, a, a lot of warmth for its weight, and it's um, and I like the it gives a kind of funky sort of look when you it, you know it, it's very rustic, and it's always like whenever I wear something made in Plotilope, people will comment on it. So it has like a kind of crafty look, but at the same time, it's really like when you um, do color work with it, it it looks really professional and beautiful. So it's kind of an interesting yarn to work with. So I would, and it's inexpensive. That's the other thing. That's the reason I bought, I ended up getting, um, a, a bunch of it because I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll put this to use and, um, you know, and I'll get a lot of bang for my buck, <laughs> so to speak. Here's the sleeves. Here's what it looks like. You know, here's what it looks like. And you can see it's like a very, very, when when we went uh, to Green Mountain Spinnery, they showed this kind of yarn and they were like, well, we, then we have to spin it because you can't knit with this yarn. And I thought to myself, well, I, I knit with that yarn. Um, a lot of people I know don't like to knit with it, uh, but I, I don't know. I know a lot of knitters do like to knit with it. So here's, I'm using these bendable, these uh, Addy Flip. They're a little bit easier to work with when I'm using four needles. But this is my sleeve and um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna bang through and I'm gonna get it. And then I'm gonna have my cardigan for the, I'll probably have that done for the fall. And uh, I'm planning my summer knits. I am waiting right now for, um, it's called Burnish from Pearl Soho, which is, it's a, um, it's a yarn that's made of uh, bamboo and it has like a rayon kind of, uh, very light and soft. I, I'm really curious and anxious to get a hold of it and see what it feels like. I'm gonna make a, um, a Breton, you know, kind of stripe sweater based on a pattern by, um, gosh, what's her Isabel name? Isabel Kramer. Her uh, name is Isabel Kramer. I will think of it. I'll post it in here. Um, and it's just going to be, I'm going to, it's going to be black and red. Those are the two colors that I made. And it's, I, I think that'll be a great knit to use over the, to make over the summer. It's nice and light. It won't be too warm to work with. Um, and yeah, so that, those are my, um, those are my unfinished or finished or works in progress. Um, and I'm going to, attach some some videos and some some things that have been going on just so you can see what's going on maybe in the garden where how things are looking up here in the spring um, I had an interesting conversation with someone about farming here in Vermont and uh, I'm gonna be doing a little I'm going to be doing a little bit about this because it's just like so fascinating to me I'm so interested in the history of Vermont and how and those who came here and those who uh, settled and how they have survived, because this is such a, you know, this is not an easy climate to survive in. And I think about it often, like, you know, we all, we have heat and we have, you know, indoors and we have snow tires and they plow. But I think about how it must have been a hundred years ago for people. And I wonder about those people. So I have been doing some research about that. And I found that all different kinds of people came to Vermont and uh, that it has an interesting history from the, from the Revolutionary War on. So I'm gonna be um, sharing some of that moving forward. I've had some interesting conversations with, with some local farmers about uh, that history in particular. Um, and uh, I'm gonna be doing something coming up about Bakashi, which is a form of uh, composting, which really is great. It makes it composting super easy and it uses lacto-fermentation or anaerobic fermentation. And so you're putting, what you're putting into the ground actually is already partly broken down and it has like no smell when you have it in your kitchen. You're covering it up with, it's in a covered container, but even when you open it up to, to add food, there is no smell. So it's a really great way to do composting. And 
Composting is something that we all can do, whether we have a backyard, whether we live in an apartment, and it's so important. We really, none of us should be throwing away um, food in the garbage. We should not be doing that. We should be helping the soil in some way, even if it's just in our outdoor gardens, that helps to reduce the carbon emissions. Um, and it just helps. We all should be doing this. And um, in this crazy world that we live in right now, it helps, I think, to be able to do something positive for the environment, for yourself, that helps you to feel connected to the earth and that you are to remember that we are one and the same with the earth, that, that what the health of the earth is our health and um, that connection is so, so important. So, so on that note, I'm gonna run and thank you so much for, for watching. I hope that if you enjoy this podcast that you will subscribe and like, comment, do all of those things. All of those things are really important. Um, and I so, so appreciate it. So, uh, and I love to, to see comments and I love to hear from people who are part of our community. So, uh, so please, please comment, like, and subscribe. Have an amazing, amazing day. Namaste.